welcome to uh, a slightly shorter version of our Talking Points podcast here at the Tron Church. Um, normally, we are discussing Sunday sermons and uh, talking around things we've been hearing on a Sunday, but this is slightly different, and uh, we're going to do some of these slightly shorter podcasts, just chatting with uh, members of the congregation and asking a very simple question, uh, why are you a Christian? And uh, I'm joined this time by Mike Green. So, Mike, thanks for coming on. Good morning. Hello, Stepping out you. during your working day. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Um, so, Mike, before we get to that question, um, just many folk who listen to this know who you are, but some won't. Mm-hmm. So just tell us who you are, what you do, just a bit of a, a potted... Who is Mike Green? <laughs> yep. uh, well, I am Mike Green. Uh, I am a man aged 40, uh, married to, to Carol. I have two little daughters, uh, and I work as an engineer here in Glasgow. And you're not a native to, like myself, you're not a native Glaswegian. No. Where, where's, how, where, where do you originate from, Mike? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I was born in the Wirral, in a place called Heswell, uh, and I've been in Glasgow for about 10 years now. Okay, so it's starting to feel like home. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, good. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay, Mike, I'm going to ask you a simple mm-hmm. question that will probably generate other questions and discussions. But, mm-hmm. Mike, why are you a Christian? How do you answer that? Why do you follow Jesus? I mean, that's a big question, but I suppose theologically and ultimately I'm a Christian because I've been chosen by God. He's revealed himself to me uh, through the scriptures. Um, and he's got a claim on my life, and so uh, I, you know, I, I follow him uh, wholeheartedly. That's that's <laughs> that's why I'm a Christian, I believe. Yep. Um, I suppose there were other facets to that. Yeah. Uh, so just you know, take us back, yeah. you know, a few years. So yeah. you you didn't grow up in a Christian home, is that right? That's so correct. So just tell us how you've you know mm. from where you've grown up to where you are now. Talk us through some of the key moments and conversations and. Yeah, key turning points for you. Mm. Well, you're right. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. My mum and dad are, still are quite indifferent to, to religion. Um, and so it, in the Wirral, I felt certainly from my experience, it was just, it was, it was really, I really had very little interaction with Christians mm-hmm. uh, as far as I can remember at least. Uh, that changed when I came to Scotland. I moved to Glasgow when I was 29. And I remember moving here and just feeling completely surrounded by Christians. It really, it was really strange. Um, but I moved here, uh, I'd, I'd just been doing a, a Scot- I'd just uh, studied uh, for a master's in, in, in Valencia in Spain. And I moved here for a job with Scottish Power, mm-hmm. who I still work for. Um, and uh, I didn't know anybody in the city. Uh, I moved into a, a, an eight bed uh, flat share, think, thinking that, yeah, <laughs> I know it was a bit of a gamble, but I thought, well, I don't know anyone, so I could maybe meet, you know, some some friends there, uh, and one of the most friendly people I met in Glasgow was was a guy who lived in that flat share, Charlie, uh, and he was a Christian, mm. and uh, in turn he in, he introduced me to many of his friends, and hence me just being seemingly surrounded by Christians. <laughs> um, but that's what it felt like. So 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 that was a turning point for me moving to Glasgow. Um, it wasn't an immediate, uh, you know, uh, switch that I, that I just embraced Christ. Far from it, but I was given the opportunity to see people who did embrace him. Um, and whilst I thought it was quite noble of them to do it, it wasn't, it wasn't something which I could do. Uh, I, I literally couldn't do it. I felt like it was intellectual. Um, well, it would have been self-deception for me to even pretend to embrace something which I didn't think was true. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, so I admired them. I even envied them a little bit for having such a simplistic worldview, which allowed them to see life so so hopefully yeah. in contrast to my more sober and negative uh or at least that's how i thought of it i thought it was much more sober and a negative evaluation of the world but i i, I envied the way they were able to see it so mm. hopefully so how would you describe your own kind of world view you know up to this point how do you sort of uh, seen yourself in terms of spiritual things and big questions in life I wouldn't have called myself spiritual, but then there's a bit of a contradiction in the way I would have. I remember when I got awarded this scholarship to go to Spain, the first thing I did is look up at the sky and say thank you. <laughs> uh, 
and I, even, I remember when I got my degree, I scraped through a first, uh, and I remember the, the people giving it to me. I, they were just receptionists. They had no input whatsoever into any of my training. And I, I remember just profusely thanking them, because I just didn't know who to thank. But, uh, and I think there's, there's a bit of, there was, that kind of just shows some of the confusion that I had. Like, I, I, I would not have called myself spiritual, and yet I had a real sense of gratitude, and, and it was misguided gratitude. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know who to, who to direct it to. Um, so yeah, not spiritual, although grateful. Um, um, really just apathetic to, to most stuff because I, had, I hadn't really, having had the sort of engineering education, mm. didn't really, wasn't ever really prompted with any big questions uh, that you might, I might have been in humanities, I don't know. Um, and so uh, when I moved to Glasgow, um, I, was, I, I was quite keen to sort of educate myself in, the, in things that I'd previously been ignorant about, and I still am ignorant about, but I wanted to learn about sociology and economics and philosophy and these types of things. And the, I found a series of books which gave like introductory talks to mm -hmm. a lot of these subjects. And the more I read, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but I think these books were, I know these books were certainly written with a very... Uh, sort of biased view, I would say now in retrospect quite a Marxist view, and and at, at almost every opportunity God and particularly Christianity was sort of uh, ridiculed, mm. and I think that that led me quite acutely down a path of coming to quite a nihilistic outlook, um, and this was this was all happening. I, I was reading these books whilst I was living with Charlie, yeah, yeah. and so the contrast was really quite um, yeah. quite acute. Um, and I remember saying to Charlie that I definitely, I definitely disagree with you. Um, we're going a different. I remember he, one of the books was on Christianity in this series, and Charlie took an interest in. Oh, you're reading that? Okay, let me know how it goes. And, he, and at the end, you know, a few weeks in, he said, you know, what have you learned? You know, yeah. and I said, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that you and I are on very different, divergent paths, Charlie. Like, good for you, but I'm definitely not going down the path you're going on. Okay. Um, <laughs> And so I would say that my view, my, my outlook, my, my sort of religious or spiritual outlook was one of materialism, nihilism. I didn't believe there was a God. Um, and I thought that Christianity was just, a, you know, a, a crutch for that. Okay. So what, what changed? So you're at this point and you've you articulated to Charlie. Yeah. I think we're going in the different direction. Yeah. So what, what changed? Well, um, I remember being in my bedroom, which is where I read all these books. Um, and I remember just having this... this uh, I think it, I might have been just putting my clothes on to go to work. And I remember just thinking to myself, I really need there to be God. Um, and I, I, need to, I, didn't just, I didn't just, it didn't just spring out of the blue like that. It, rather, I felt that the way, the, with my outlook, I thought there is, you know, right and wrong, absolute morality is, is non-existent. It's all sort of relative. It's all a construct. And, you know, morality in one side of the globe might be different to mm -hmm. somewhere else or at a different time period. And so it's all fluid. Um, and that actually terrified me because I just thought, flip, you know, which way is up? Um, yeah. And I, simultaneously, uh, I, was, I was longing for uh, a meaningful romantic relationship, um, having been a serial monogamist and, and, and felt the pain of broken relationships. I, I wanted love, but deep down, I thought to myself that the pursuit of love really is futile when someone with you know who's been enlightened with me with this little book set knows that you know love really is just chemical it, it, it's nothing more mm -hmm. than chemicals um it's just a it's just a, a biological so it's like an evolutionary uh, incentive to get you to reproduce and so once you once you once you think that you've you've lifted the hood and you've seen you've seen the truth then why bother even pursuing love if you think it's just if you, if you think you know you, you're just being manipulated by your genes and so I was denying myself the prospect of real love uh, because I thought it wasn't real. Uh, I was trying to wrestle with the, with the concept of there being no absolute morality, even though I knew certain things were wrong. Yes. And I think that alone just prompted me. It just sort of kicks, it just something, something just kicked within me that just said, no, I know that to be false. <laughs> like, I, I know that some things are categorically wrong and I know that I feel genuine compassion, if not love, certainly compassion for, for certain people. Uh, there are people who, who I feel real genuine compassion for. And so I couldn't deny those feelings. And so I dared 
to conceive, well, maybe there is a God, or at least I really want there to be a God. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was the first step in me, in me actually, it, was, it felt like quite a brave thing to do because it felt like it was a step into a, a, a real abyss, um, which in, in hindsight, totally uh, is the opposite. Um, it's coming home to, the, to, to what's manifestly true, but, yeah. but um, I, I felt brave enough to consider that maybe there is a God. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you kind of get to that point, and then what, what led you into uh, the Bible and yeah. Christianity? Obviously, you had your friend Charlie, but... Um... It's, it's funny that you... Should, I remember just a moment ago, you asked me whether I was spiritual, and I said no, but I've just remembered that at the time I was actually attending lunchtime Buddhist meditation classic and I don't think I don't think I really thought of that as being spiritual but mm-hmm. certainly it was it was sort of a tonic to my sort of whizzing mind yeah. I, I was able to just try and center myself on something um, so I was doing that and I felt some benefit from that but it, it didn't it didn't fill this void of God mm-hmm. um, which 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 I which I felt and so Charlie was he must have been inviting me to, I mean, he, he, he made a point of going to church every, every Lord's yeah. Day. And so the invite was always there. Often we'd go camping or go on a, a weekend adventure with him and his friends. And, you know, we'd come home and they'd say, will you be coming to the evening service with us tonight? And I'd say, no, thanks. Uh, mm-hmm. And so it was easy for me to just accept an invitation when it came, yeah. which I did. Uh, went along to church and um, that was, that, it was interesting. I really was wanting there to be God a guard at this at this point um my first impressions of the church i went to was that it was a lot less rev- reverent than i thought it ought to be okay. <laughs> strangely um i thought they were having a lot a lot of fun um it wasn't as solemn as i thought it might be um but uh anyway to cut a long story short i i went along to that church and uh i did feel i felt that what was coming from the front was really very meaningful. Mm. Um, I used to pray. I used to sort of, was it prayer or contemplation at the end? I used to certainly sit and reflect. And then, as I said, I thought it was sort of irreverent because people would sort of just jump into conversation. Whereas for me, that was really quite impactful. Uh, don't get me wrong, I wasn't a Christian. Of course I wasn't. Um, but I had, a, I had a genuine need for... I had a genuine need for truth a searching for something. I wasn't quite sure what it was. And I, I just remember at the time uh, feeling like this um, it was this was good for me. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, I, I was given a Bible. I was very confused. There were, a lot, there were, there were lots of, uh, there, was, there was a lot of confusion there. But I was given a Bible and that's when things started to change. Okay. And did you just start picking up and reading it yourself, or how did you en- engage with it, and how, how did you begin to understand the essence of, of the gospel? I was given a Bible in the context of being invited to what they call Bible read-through, which is sure. when they just read through the Bible each yeah. year. It was really quite an unstructured approach, but it does mean you, get, you start reading the Bible. And they just happened to be starting with a new round in Mark. Mm-hmm. So I picked up and started reading Mark. I think I tried, I, I took it home and I just Googled or YouTubed, you know, gospel. Of, uh, and I ended up watching the Gospel of John film. Okay. Uh, try, uh, and so I, I, I just started reading and watching these videos uh, really with, at this point I was still very skeptical and I was really reading it critically, trying to find sort of, um, uh, you know, inconsistencies and that sort of thing. But it was, it was in that process that I, that I came face to face with, with the Lord Jesus mm. in, in his gospel. Great. And so tell us how you've got to the, this point now. You're part of the, the Tron. You're serving in all sorts of ways. Just you know, from going from reading that yeah. and beginning to get clarity, just in a nutshell, how, you, how you've ended up at this stage now. Um, I suppose it was, it was whilst I was reading the gospel uh, or the gospels that uh, it, it started to, this, this idea started to precipitate for me that this, this view of Christians as I had of them was not, a, was not a biblical one. So here was Jesus and he was speaking negatively of, of these very religious, uh, he was speaking negatively of the Pharisees and he was, he was sort of cast, passing judgment on them 
whilst he was he was welcoming into his kingdom people who were sort of outsiders uh and i just i just really uh empathized with that i just felt that yeah you know my my whole lifetime experience of religion has been one of i i've perceived hypocrisy and and various things that i didn't like mm. and and it felt like jesus was saying i totally understand uh and, and and now i'm presenting you with real religion uh like i want i really want you i want you a full obedience um it's not about what you can do for me but rather what i can do for you as a sinner um and it, it, it just really, um, the, the gospel just completely captivated me. And it was, I remember just um, coming to a realization that, that Jesus, you know, really is God and that he really is inviting me into his kingdom. And there's nothing I can bring and, and I'm chosen. If I, if I believe this, it's because I'm chosen. And it was just a, a, this dawning realization of the privilege that, mm. that, that I have in Christ it was just... It just, it was just wonderful. Um, and so, and having that, having felt that, that, that he's captured me, that I'm his, uh, that he's, he's almost taken me ransom, uh, willingly, but, 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 uh, but he, he, I'm totally his, is, is something which has never left me and I, and, mm. I, and, I, and I trust never will. Um, and so I, I continue to, 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 to want more and more affirmation of this incredibly good news and mm -hmm. so it's it, it's led me on this uh this 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 path of, of seeking to understand and, and obey him and mm -hmm. it's in pursuit of that that those goals that, are, that i've been led to the tron church where you know his word is faithfully expounded and taught and i think it's uh it, that, that's why i'm here yeah that's great well it's so encouraging you know, praise god it's amazing to hear your own your own story, and, and you're involved a little bit with some of the work in the church as we seek to to reach others. And um, you've been involved with the life course recently. Mm -hmm. Just help you know, help us think. You, you you've come from a place of you know non-church backgrounds. You know, at points maybe hostile to Christian Christian faith and and the Bible. How would you encourage us as a church as we think about reaching Glasgow for Christ? As you think about reaching those who are lost, how would you encourage us in our task um, as we go about that? Because it's easy to be discouraged, but just you know, from your own perspective, how would you encourage us uh, as a church? Well, I'm certainly no, no expert, uh, but my own conviction is just to be faithful to the word of God. I think I would, I would, be, uh, I would be hesitant to embrace any sort of innovation uh, that, that might sort of try to appeal to the felt needs of mm. people but rather have absolute unflinching confidence in the power of the word of god and his complete understanding and control of the situation he knows exactly what people need mm. more than the people themselves know right. and so i would just as i say have unflinching uh, perseverance and confidence in the word of god uh, and teach it and yes. preach it um Come what may. Yes, the Lord knows better than we do how to go about reaching the nations and how to reach those who are lost. Um, so that's that's where our confidence is to be, uh, to proclaim the gospel uh, in all its fullness. Um, and yeah, He knows He knows people's needs and situations better than we do, doesn't He? So yeah, that's helpful. Mike, thanks so much. Thanks for popping in Thank during you. a busy working day. It's been great to, <laughs> great to hear something of your own story. That's encouraging. But uh, thanks for listening, folks, and uh, hopefully more of these stories uh, to come. But thanks, Mike. Good to see you. Thank you.